Hey loves, it's your girl Sherika Shay. Welcome back to Love Creates Beauty. Today's special guest is Linda Anderson. All right, love. So not only is Linda a professional, Linda is a two-time graduate from, she has a BA from Grambling University, as well as a master's in education. And she is a teacher of the arts as well as creative writing. Not only that, she is a published author and a queen with a big heart. So loves, help me welcome Linda Anderson. Hi y'all. <laughs> Thank you for coming. Thank you for being here. So let's get into it, Linda. Let's get into it. All right. So you being a professional teacher and all this good stuff, and I know it takes a lot to pour into the children. It takes a lot to pour into the youth, right? So what, you know, what made you choose that profession? I mean, to be honest, I really didn't choose this profession. It kind of like chose me. Um, I thought I was gonna be like some kind of abnormal psychologist, but um, I was always in love with the art. So when I got out of college, I was a behavioral therapist under a clinician, mm -hmm. is that the proper term or whatever? And I was taking data for like autistic children. Mm -hmm. And someone told me like, hey, you know, we need a drama teacher. And I was like, okay, because it was part time. And um, I was so good with the kids, he ended up asking me like, hey, would you like to be a TA? And this was like fresh out of college. Mm -hmm. I'm like, sure, but it doesn't take that much of my time. So the first day of class, I come back the next year, the teacher didn't show up. Oh, wow. <laughs> the lead teacher. Yeah. So I'm just looking at him, I'm sitting in the back, and I'm like, I know. <laughs> he never asked me to teach. And he was like, do you mind covering for the day? And I'm looking at him like, I've never taught a class by myself. I'm like, what does that mean? So then, um, yeah, the teacher never showed up. Oh, wow. And um, after that, he said, you know, what if you... Um, get into grad school, the job is your life. But I'm like, I don't want to be no teacher. Yeah. And it's 13 years later. 13 years and I'm later, still wow. teaching. <laughs> she got through into the profession, okay? Yeah. She got through into the profession, yeah. okay? That's awesome. That's awesome. And you took it on. So I love that. All right. And then, so let me ask you this What's one thing about teaching that you didn't expect? <laughs> um,. A couple of things that, well, I will start with saying that it's different every year. Mm -hmm. Like, you think you got it, and then these kids be like, ha, got you. <laughs> and you got to be like, wow, like, I thought I had it. So it's different every year. Um, you have to evolve with the times. Mm -hmm. um, and also just to that, this is really a heartfelt job. It's not for the week. Yeah. It's not for the week, and it's not for the money. Okay. <laughs> Let's make it clear. <laughs> it's not for the money. You really gotta have a passion for it. So, um, it, you know, it is. It's, it's passionate. Sometimes it's sad. Yeah. Sometimes it's rewarding. Sometimes you be like, they make you feel dumb. You like, I thought I had a good lesson. They like, what? And I'm like, okay, let me go back to the drawing board. But it's really heartfelt. That's awesome. Awesome. I love that how you have your heart into it because you have to have your heart into it you have to especially if you want to show up and yeah. be showing up every day so yeah definitely. all right so what's one lesson your job has taught you that you think everyone should learn at some point in their life um perseverance and enduring mm -hmm. um also too with the pandemic it taught you that you gotta be ready for anything yeah. um, you gotta really be flexible as a teacher mm -hmm. um, you gotta meet people where they are and that's a life lesson like not just for kids you gotta really meet people where they are because mm -hmm. um, sometimes you're put in rooms with people that you may not have even been you know introduced to or right. something and like just me having to adjust to every kid and understand try to have some understanding of their background and culture mm -hmm. it helps me in life yeah. So that I would say that, like, and just perseverance. And you know, you gotta persevere with these kids. Absolutely, <laughs> I love that. Be yeah. flexible and have perseverance. Mm -hmm. That's amazing. That's some good advice right there. That y'all pin that. That's that's real good advice right there. All right. And then so tell me about. Okay, so tell me at least three influential people that have inspired you in your life or had a, the most impact in your life. Um, I'm going to say my mom. My mom has always inspired me. She's strong. You know, like, we don't get along all the time. But, <laughs> like, you know, I learned from her. Mm -hmm. Um, everybody who knows me, I, I stay, I'm going to say this till I die, Felicia Rashad. Yeah. Um, she, you know, they set the platform like, oh, I could be successful. Right. I have five kids. I don't have five kids. But I'm not going to have five kids either. <laughs> but, you know, just to see a black family um, and black professionals on TV was like super dope. And then 
Um, I tell people this all the time. Uh, it's just like black women I meet. Like, yeah. I feel like everybody I meet is like a journey, you know? Mm -hmm. And I'm always ready for the adventure. Like, I'm not the person that screams no new friends, not at all. But because I feel like as I get older, I'm able to learn. Mm -hmm. You know, when you're younger, you only have what's in like your neighborhood, your school. But as you get older, I choose people in my life. Like, I choose my relationships. Like, I choose you. Like, oh my gosh, she travel. I'm going to be with her. She got financial literacy. I'm going to, you know, like, so I would say every black woman that I come across, because we dope. Yeah, we are dope. That's beautiful. <laughs> I love we that. Dope. Yes, I love it. I love it. We are dope. I love it. All righty, and then so let me ask you this question. All right, at what time of the day do you get your best work done? At night. At night? At night. Okay. Um, that's when I'm like in my thoughts. That's when I'm able to unpack and I just leave my day alone. Mm -hmm. And that's when I get to get creative and like come up with ideas because I, I, I'm working on leaving my work at work. <laughs> that's, that's a good one too. I'm working on that. Like it took a long time because it is a heartfelt job. So you do bring it home. You yeah. carry their problems. Yeah. Oh yeah, I love that. I love that. Okay, and so back to you saying you get creative at night. Let me go ahead and put it out there real quick. We do have the book, okay? Her, it's a part of her poetry collection, okay? It's gonna be a collection, okay? All right, and then so let me ask you this one. All right, so what inspired you? All righty, and then, or when did you know that you had a love for poetry? So, I knew I had a love of poetry. Like, I always been like a little tragedy nerd. So, like, I love Romeo and Juliet. She said tragedy. <laughs> like, I love tragedy plays, you know, and like poetry. Shakespeare is dramatic, mm -hmm. you know. Um, and then when I went to college, Grandma State University, whoop, whoop, shout, shout out. out. Um, when I went to college, I took a philosophy class and I was introduced to the Oedipus complex and all those people. And it was just like interesting because it's like, um, people don't like, you know, Shakespeare because it's like Bible. It's hard to read, but it's like so deep. So that's what inspired me. Um, yeah. I hope okay. I got the question. All right. <laughs> no, it was just basically like, you know, when did you know you had a love for it? Yeah. And you basically answered it all in one. So that's awesome. Okay. All right. And then, so let me ask you this. What was it that you told yourself? That it was time for you to go ahead and start your poetry collection what clicked in your mindset because i know it takes a special mindset i always say that in order to come out of the box in order to put your creations your creativity you have to first i believe it starts in the mind so what was it that clicked that made you in your mindset that made you say it was time for me to go ahead and put this poetry oh. I've been writing poetry for a long time, and I've been performing for a long time. I just, you know, um, I think it's just that thing of stop sleeping on yourself. Like, I have so many people that I'm always encouraging, like, because, I mean, that's just, like, I'm plugged, like, like low-key. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I'm, like, always like, oh, you should do this, or you should meet with this person. And I remember me and one of my friends was talking, and um, he was affirming me. He was like, you know what's so crazy? He was like, you're such a giver. He was like, and you don't know how blessed you are. He was like, it'd be like, oh, you want to do this film? He said, opportunities just fall in your lap because of who you are. And he was like, you just look at them like they're just, you know. And I'm like, no, they're blessings. And he was like, you know what, I'm going to leave you with this. He was like, you always tell me it was never my job to wake up anybody sleeping on me. And I always say that playfully. Yeah. And that night I went home and it stuck with me and it stuck with me. And they kept saying, like, because everybody kept saying, oh, Linda's coming out with a book. Yeah. Linda's coming out with a book. I was like, I'm not. And then I just sat down after I had some losses, and mm -hmm. you know, like deaths and stuff. Mm -hmm. And I remember the last thing that somebody said to me, which was my cousin Angelo. He was like, yo, he was like, you, you're going to be somebody. And not that I didn't think I was somebody, but I, I got into this writing group called Freedom Tours. Shout out to Freedom Tours. Black Shout woman group. Um, Shout you can't know I remember. Yes, it was amazing. And they're super dope. And they just always encouraging me. And they had me tapping into some deep feelings. So I was like, this stuff is too personal to share, mm -hmm. you know. But then that's when it was. It was like, I'm always telling people stop sleeping on you, on themselves. And I'm sleeping on myself. Yeah. So I had to wake up. Okay. <laughs> so stop sleeping on yourself, loves. Put those creative juices into play. Put your ideas. Put it on paper. Make a plan and make it happen. The world is waiting for you to show up. There is space for you always and forever. All right? You to get that creativity thought in your mind for no reason so share that with the world all right loves so before we get up out of here linda can you please let the people know where they can find you and i also have it in the description box as well okay. um so 
You can find me on Instagram at Lynn Marie. That's three E's because it's French. I'm not French, but it's French. <laughs> Lynn Marie. Yeah. And then you can follow my business page. And then there was her. Yeah. Um, it's exactly how it says. It's just underscore after each. And I just became part of something called the Porter Cipher. Okay. Um, so you can follow that too. So. And thank we'll have you. all that in the description. Thank you for coming. Thanks for having me. Thank you. Thank you so much, loves. And also, too, we'll have the link in the description box as well for And Then There Was Her, the poetry collection. This is the first one, and we're waiting for the next one, all right? All right, love. So, <laughs> remember, love creates beauty. How do I know? Because love created you. Take care. Bye.